First inhabited 1,500 years ago by the Klinglet Indians out of Canada, this magnificent stretch of lush forest and water is home to a wealth of wildlife. 15,000 years ago, the watery trail known as the Inside Passage was locked in an icy embrace. As the land warmed, rivers sprang up, leaving behind massive glaciers that exist to this day. Europeans did not come to this land until 1741, when the Russians, led by Vitus Bering, discovered the Inside Passage, establishing a fur trading settlement just north of Sitka. From 1774 to 1800, ships from Spain, Britain, France, Russia, and America glided among the misty waterways in search of the treasures of this pristine land. It was all downhill from there, as the land was stripped of its natural resources. First fur, then gold, then fish, then timber. As the fur supply depleted, and the cost of maintaining the Alaska settlements became too great, the Russians opted out and sold the land to America for $7 million in 1867. Seward's Folly became the 49th state in 1959. Here at Morris Reef, uh, this is one of the favorite places for bubble feeding in Chatham Straits. And um, they move from side to side across Chatham and over to the Admiralty Islands. We uh, came to Alaska to photograph reefs, the humpback uh, whales that migrate here every summer to feed on herring and krill. Where they like to bubble we are feed here with renowned uh, underwater videographer Stan Waterman and big animal photographer Amos Nahoam. Our home for the nine days we spent exploring the inside passage was the Glacier Seal, owned and operated by Pat McGehee, a very knowledgeable guide and accomplished wildlife photographer. There are lots of whales out there, and it looks like they're grouping together. The sonar depth sounder shows a large school of herring near the boat. Camera's ready. We're waiting for the show to begin. They're all going down now. This is definitely a cooperative feeding gesture. Bubbles, two o'clock. I see them. Whoa. What a glorious sight.
Once the whales begin cooperative lunch feeding, they can stay at it for hours, as long as the food is plentiful. Sometimes they feed in pairs, sometimes in groups as large as a dozen or more. It is clear that there is a great deal of communication among these highly intelligent animals. There's a school of herring out there. The density of fish is so high that the water appears to be boiling. When the herring are closely packed like this, the whales gently swim through the mass sideways, downing more than 100 pounds in one gulp. As depicted in this animation, humpback whales have been observed to blow bubble rings, or nets, around a school of herring to enclose and disorient them. Sometimes, the whale makes this high-pitched sound as picked up by our hydrophone. The whales then swim up and through the school with open mouths and extended gullet filtering the water out through the baling. There's a sea lion out there swimming among the whales. He's just as curious as we are, but he has a better vantage point from which to witness this glorious spectacle. The whales are all around us now. When they come up this time, we should get some very good close-up footage. Baleen is made of a keratin-like material, similar to fingernails. We have been watching this young whale lying on his back, slapping his fin for the last 10 minutes. At first, 
We thought he was just playing around. But whales use sound for communication. And perhaps this one is calling out for his mother. He appears to be tiring. The story of Juno begins with the discovery of a vast treasure of gold-bearing quartz by a prospector named Joseph Juno in 1879. Mining lasted until the 1940s, yielding several hundred million dollars in gold during its 60-year history. Juno, a town of only 36,000 people, became the capital of Alaska in 1906. Located along the southeast coast of Alaska, 900 miles from Seattle, this fertile land is home to many species of wildlife, including bears, seals, sea lions, eagles, orcas, and, of course, humpback whales. Glaciers are a constant reminder of the icy origins of the Inside Passage, and there is no better way to get a close-up look at these geological wonders than by a helicopter flyover. The small icebergs that result from calving highlight the summer landscape in the strait near Endicott Arm. These ice sculptures provide wonderful material for the still life photographer and the perfect way to chill the evening martini. Ice flows from Dawes Glacier provide a home for the harbor seals, who maintain a healthy population in this part of Alaska. They are usually solitary hunters in the water, dining on fish, squid, and crustaceans. But here on land, 
they congregate in the hundreds. The largest Stella sea lion is more comfortable on a rocky island. These animals are much more gregarious, but the dominant male can be aggressive in protecting his harem. This is a threatened species, declining in population due to depletion of their food supply. 64,000 live in Alaska out of a world population of only 120,000. I'm not sure this is such a comfortable roost. The sea otter in the distance is a rare sight here in the inside passage. Tens of thousands of these rambunctious animals once played, foraged, and raised their pups along much of the Pacific Rim coastline. The fur trade of the 18th and 19th centuries decimated populations. But Alaskan sea otters are slowly coming back. California sea otters are having a harder time, though they have made an amazing recovery since 1938, when only 32 animals were left. Today, more than 2,000 sea otters live along the central California coast. Since 1995, however, the numbers have been declining. A curious behavior of the sea otter is its sense of tidiness. Often, it will roll over in the water to clear its chest of any waste scraps as it scrubs itself clean after a meal of sea urchin or abalone. A trip to Alaska would not be complete without a trip to a salmon stream during the spawning season. In a few weeks, these salmon will spawn and then die, completing the cycle that began here a few years ago. When the stream is filled with spawning salmon, black bears eat only the fat, rich brains, leaving the carcass for others. They usually den high up in the mountains from October to the beginning of May, after gorging themselves on their favorite meal. They eat both meat and vegetation, with front canine teeth like wolves and back molars like humans. As you can see, this female salmon was filled with eggs. Black bears evolved from dog-like ancestors about 20 million years ago. Unlike the brown and grizzly bear, it is an agile climber. Mating season is from May to July. Often, the male bear will eat the newborn cubs, 
resulting in a mortality rate due to cannibalism of 60%. Oh my god. How the hell did it fly, sir? These orcas are transients who come through Frederick Sound to feed on marine animals as well as fish. Reaching speeds of more than 30 miles per hour, they are one of the fastest animals in the sea. Alaska's Inside Passage is a very special place not only for the glorious spectacle put on by the humpback whales, but for all the other animals that make this their home. Despite centuries of abuse, the populations of whales, seals, sea lions, sea otters, and other endangered species are making a comeback. We hope that you have enjoyed this brief visit to one of the most awe-inspiring wildernesses in America. <laughs>